Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 78 of the Home Games Podcast. My name is Joseph. Uh, today is April 20th, 2021, uh, and it's a Tuesday. Normally, Yazid would be with me, but he was doing some non-Home Games stuff this week. So it's just me this week. Uh, I'm married. That is the new update, I guess. I haven't recorded in uh, two weeks. So the whole thing was took a vacation to get married, went out and did that. Sonovia and I are now married. Uh, very cool. Uh, for home game stuff, I'm just going to talk about some of the kind of restructuring of things that I've been thinking about lately. Uh, kind of taking a, a week off made me rethink about particularly the website and the, what it needs to do um, and that kind of stuff. Um, and I guess I'm not going to talk about what's up because there's not much to talk about besides I'm married and you don't want to hear me talk about that by myself. So anyway, home game stuff. Let's just get into it. <laughs> I guess the main the main thing I want to talk about is I'm redesigning the website because I think the current one is trash. I think the simple look that I was going for in the, in the sense of like, my goal was people are overwhelmed by the amount of content on the website and it's not clear what home games is. So I tried to condense key parts or key info into a, a less complicated, more straightforward design in the current version that I called V2. To be honest, I just like rushed it out. I think because I was just trying to, I was just trying to get, get it finished because it's not very interesting to me, the website. And I think I was thinking about it in the wrong way. Um, and I guess, so, so to take a step back, I took a course, not really took a course. I watched like an eight minute YouTube video that claimed it was a part of a course. So anyway, uh, about UX, uh, user experience, uh, taught by someone who I guess works in some UX uh, department at Google. Um, and the, the key takeaway of that was basically user focused design what do your users want out of what you're doing out of your product and i guess one of the things that kind of caught me off guard there was that i never really thought about home games as a product uh, it was kind of like an experiment to see if i can get this websocket game system working um oh, okay yeah you know i can and, oh i need it to be faster so i'll build like this improvement into this kind of game engine thing and wouldn't it be cool if Everybody can play it, you know, over this network thing and homegames.link was was kind of part of that idea. So that was kind of another little section. And then it was like, oh, well, we need, you know, this and this and this eventually became, oh, we need game publishing, which is kind of the part where we're at right now. And realizing that we do kind of have a product. We do, we do have a service that we're offering to people, uh, even if there's no, you know business or corporation or like manager or, or people in suits or anything like that. We do have a, like a software product. So kind of thinking in that way, uh, what does the website need to be and what do I need to do to make it clear what my product is? Um, and that, that course thing I was talking about basically was understand the problem. And a lot of people make websites or apps or, or whatever software without understanding the problem. They claim they have a solution for something, but they don't have a problem. And if you can really understand that problem and explain that problem and kind of address it, then you have like basically your, your marketing in a way or the base of your marketing. Um, so understanding the product is key, I guess. Anyway, all that aside, the focus should be simplicity. And that was kind of the goal with V2, like I mentioned. It's the current thing that I have where it's essentially half a paragraph of text, an image, you know, linked to our podcast and stuff like that. And I think the problem is I, I, I don't have a clear idea or I didn't have a clear idea what people wanted. In my head, it's people are going to search for make a game or game platform or JavaScript game, that kind of stuff, you know, trying to think of like people who are, who are thinking about going to a coding boot camp. And that's like the customer, I guess, in my head, or at least in my head, the, the current thinking of like a developer, maybe who's, who's trying to, to get into this whole thing. And maybe that's the wrong audience or, or whatever. I'm not really sure. I'm kind of just focused on that, that person at the moment. And how do I make them interested and say, hey, maybe mess around with this system. And I think I've always known that the system isn't quite ready for people to experiment with in that way, to really poke around and have like a good experience without just being frustrated and kind of confused, like why the fuck did they make this and that kind of stuff. Cause I think the, the most consistent thing I get from people is like, what is home games again? Like that's, that's the key thing. 
and it's always led with me like a you know like a three minute explanation like oh you see like you know Jackbox or whatever, and that's always going to be like the way I describe things I think because it's just me in a way. But um, I need to have that like thirty second pitch or whatever. Anyway, again I ramble. Uh, the new version of simplicity I think for the website should be. Uh, kind of categorizing things into potentially what you want. You're, you're either a person who's interested in just kind of playing games. You want to just download the home games client. I'll talk about that in a little bit, the home games client. Um, you just want to download this thing, play this thing, you know, run this thing and, and play games with people. That's all you care about. You want to find new games, you want to play games and whatever, and it's simple to get into and all this kind of stuff. You're, you're basically the most, uh, uh, the largest number of customers. The majority of people coming to the website will be this, per this person, I imagine. Uh, or someone to kind of learn about what it is. Uh, the other one is people who are interested in the developer, uh, the developer content, documentation, you know, kind of how-to explanation kind of stuff. Um, and that might be a different person or, or kind of a different thing that they need other than like an intro website. They're not necessarily trying to download binaries or look at a demonstration. They're looking at how do I build something here? And that website doesn't need to be all up front. So I think there should be a developer resources section of the website uh, and a very simple like here's a button go to developer stuff over here uh, and similarly the podcast I think a lot of the, the stuff for the uh, v1 and kind of v1.5 slash v2 thing that we currently have right now for the website I think I've put the podcast kind of front and center because I know that the software isn't like impressive to look at yet the, the kind of vision isn't there so i don't want to put that up front so i think i just say hey here's a podcast people don't give a fuck about your podcast when you're like hey <laughs> you know what is home games you're not going to listen to a 90 minute podcast as a result of your search uh, and that kind of took some time to understand again just understanding your customer understanding well, your customer's a weird word understanding who you're getting to uh your goal i guess um so yeah and another thing i mentioned was the home games client so, so technically speaking, the home games thing that someone downloads to play home games on their computer, the actual end kind of product of all this website and thing that you download and play and experience and whatever, that thing is two node JavaScript servers, right? It's a tech, like there's a technical explanation obviously for how it works, but People don't need to know that or care. Like if I wanted to make something as accessible as YouTube, for example, they don't need to tell you that they're encoding H.264 video and processing it over whatever. It's technically impressive and it's interesting for people who want to know that. But the person who's like, what is YouTube, doesn't care about that, doesn't need to know about that. And so I think what, one of my things with the podcast has always been talk about technical stuff in non-technical ways. And I don't think I've done a great job of that, m mostly because... I, d I don't have a bar for like what non-technical necessarily means. In my head, it's like I'm not talking about algorithms. So me saying something like CPU is non-technical, but I realize then it's like people people don't necessarily know what that means, and that's you know obviously not their fault or whatever. I mean, it's not a bad thing. It's just kind of again knowing your audience, who are you talking to, and that kind of a thing. Uh, pretty much every friend or family member who's listened to this podcast has said like, yeah, you know, it was kind of interesting. I liked kind of the you guys part, but. Uh, when you started talking about tech stuff, I just, you completely lost me. And in my head, I'm thinking, okay, well, it's not for you. You know, it's kind of for a more technical person, someone who's more interested in uh, how things work. But, but I don't think that's true. I think you can be interested in the development of the, of the, of the process and be interested in us, like, you know, personality wise and that kind of stuff and enjoy the podcast without feeling overwhelmed by the technical stuff. So like, I haven't discussed this thing with like, with this idea with Yazid or anything like that, but in my head, I'm kind of thinking, uh, maybe like less of a technical approach, if not just in the way that I, I talk about things, but in the kind of the, the way that we put content into this podcast. Um, cause I do think that we can t talk about this thing, this stuff in interesting ways without talking about technical stuff. But at the same time, I think so much of the progress is kind of in-depth technical stuff that it's hard to talk about that without talking about the code or whatever. But again, that's the skill that I think I need to develop. It's the, it's the goal for me. Talk about technical things in a non-technical way. All that's a long way of saying, when I say home games client, the thing that people download, they don't give a fuck that it's two servers. I'm just gonna call it the home games client. You can download it, and for easy terminology, that was another thing in that uh, course I watched where 
be consistent with your terminology and use terminology people understand. If you come to the website and you say, you know, uh, again, what is this? I'm trying to learn about home games. And I'm like, oh, it's a Node.js single-threaded event loop process or whatever. The f like, I've lost you. I've lost most people coming to the website. Um, so, again, I think I'm just kind of rambling here. I'm essentially just t talking about my understanding of user experience design at this very like in, uh, basic level because uh, I'm just really trying to get into understanding that stuff. Uh, I think as a... As a software developer, you know, kind of with a, a computer science background, it's kind of like this thing to be, to be like, oh, I don't know much about graphic design and I don't really need to. But I don't think that's true. I think it's kind of very much related because it's the way that your system looks to people um, and kind of yeah, people people experience it, I guess, the way people experience it, which is UX and now that sounds corny. But anyway, you get it. Uh, the UX is important. So the website will be, here's downloads, here's a demo looking at a, a, a mock-up of it at the moment. Uh, GitHub button, like here's a link to all of our code and all of our stuff. A Twitter thing, like if you're interested in us, social stuff, whatever, come follow us on Twitter. Another simple button, like developer resources, and then another for, for the podcast. Again, it's like not many words, just a button. If you're here for, for basics, here's like this overall collection of things that we have and dig into any of them. I'm essentially, now that I'm talking, I'm realizing that the innovation here is web pages, like slash, you know, slash developers, slash podcast. And that's my big, my big uh, realization that, that, that the, the experience can be better with just pages, um, which is kind of funny to me. The last kind of uh, interesting thing I think I want to talk about, um, uh, at least to me, about the home games, Oh, sorry, the website redesign is the contact form. Uh, one thing I think is is kind of important to me is just getting feedback. Again, I think, um, you know, like my family saying, oh, it's, uh, it's like kind of not interesting. Uh, it's good feedback, and I want to hear that kind of stuff from people. And I don't necessarily want the barrier. I basically want that barrier for, for feedback to be as low as possible. So I'm going to add a contact form to the website. Uh, basically, without tweeting at us, without emailing us, without whatever, you go to the website, click contact, totally anonymous, um, you know, form comes up, send us some text and whatever, and we'll read it, um, or I'll read it, I'll read it at least. Um, and I think, I think that, like, anonymous feedback stuff is a good way to get a lot of garbage, but it's also a, a way for people just to feel more um, comfortable with giving you feedback if it's someone that you know and maybe they don't want to tell you that your podcast sucks. Uh, you know, you can kind of provide that, that uh, ability for them in a way that is comfortable, I guess. Um, and, you know, I'll probably have in the form a little thing to leave your email if you want us to get back to you for anything. And I think that can be kind of a general support thing. You know, contact us kind of implies contact just, you know, kind of for whatever general purpose you have. But I think it could also be a support thing, at least at the beginning. You know, we don't really have a lot of support demand at the moment. Um, and then we would have the similar thing on the uh, like slash podcast page, you know, kind of more of a in-depth stuff on the actual podcast or people who are interested in that stuff and not really focus too much on the main website. Um, again, just kind of understanding the product and uh, what I'm going for. Um, and then uh, I guess just to kind of wrap up home games stuff, uh, not realizing I've been talking for almost 15 minutes, uh, is that I kind of have a due date for myself, an actual deadline. Um, the realest deadline in the sense that I have like paid for some promotion <laughs> for the website, which just sounds corny to say, but I, I kind of want to gain some traction on this. So I paid for some promotion to go into a, like a, a podcast uh, platform starting in May, and I want to have the website presentable and nice and that kind of stuff by then. So today's 420. Uh, mathing that out, I've got about 10 days or so to finish all this stuff. Um, and I guess the website is is every service and feature that we have available, you know, kind of the certificate stuff, the accounts, the, the game publishing, the asset management, the the whole system essentially is going to be uh, utilized on, on the website. Basically, all these things will come into play in the tools that are available to people in the UI, that kind of stuff. So the website being complete by May 1st is essentially me saying here is the closest thing I've had to a V1, and I don't want to call it a V1 because <laughs> that's too real. The closest thing I have to a V1 to say, like, here's what we have. 
the, the closest thing, like to the to the clearest vision in my head or whatever, what this thing should be. Put it out there and see what happens because I feel like I haven't I haven't presented the vision correctly up to this point. Um, anyway, that's kind of it for home game stuff. I hope that was interesting. Uh, I kind of just rambled about what I've been thinking about in my head over the past week or so about what I'm doing with my life essentially. Uh, you know, getting married will will trigger that that thing in your head. Um, anyway, that's kind of it for that. I also have a song of the week. Uh, not quite, not really. Oh, song of the week. I gotta wait for the music and go. All right, song of the week. Uh, so I haven't, rec- we haven't recorded uh, since before DMX passed away. So I have some songs I listened to this past week and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but there was a very cool moment at the wedding where, uh, you know, everybody was on the dance floor. There were kind of different groups of people, different family, different friends, kind of different uh, cliques, if you will, <laughs> you know, dancing at the wedding. Um, but not everybody all at once, except for Cupid Shuffle, because obviously. Um, but the DJ played Party Up, Up in Here. You know, the y'all gonna make me lose my mind. Everybody knows that song. Everybody loves that song. Um, and I think everybody has that kind of thing for DMX, you know, just kind of knowing his music uh, and that kind of stuff. And it, it is just such a sad thing to see somebody uh, at that kind of status with that kind of um, legacy, I guess, uh, just, you know, pass away like that. It was pretty, pretty sad to see and it was it was a cool moment because when they played that song at the wedding everybody at every table every family member every whatever uh got up you know to do like their big goofy dances and their i don't know what to do but up in here you know type dances and it was just really nice um definitely one of the standout moments of the the wedding and i hope it's in the you know the videographer's video or whatever when we get it back but yeah song of the week party up up in here dmx uh rest in peace to dmx uh yeah and i guess that's about it uh, I'm thinking in my head. Is that about it? I'm looking at my notes. That's about it. And we're going to go get Taco Bell because it's 420. Anyway, thank you all for listening. Uh, we'll see you next week. And uh, yeah, we'll see you. Thank you. <laughs>